Mr. Speaker, really and truly, um, given the inclemency of the weather, one would have thought that we would have departed from this forum with due dispatch. But, Mr. Speaker, I heard some utterances by the leader of the opposition. And the sad reality is, Mr. Speaker, if certain assertions are left unchecked, unchallenged, they go down the annals of belief. And I just want to take them one by one, as said by the leader of the opposition. First and foremost, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure you heard quite pellucidly, the leader of the opposition said, Grenada filed for bankruptcy. I heard correct, Mr. Speaker? Good. A simple Google search revealed this. Countries cannot become bankrupt whether they pay off their debts or not. There is no bankruptcy mechanism that operates at the national or international level. A country can default on its payment obligations, but it cannot put it cannot put be put into a bankruptcy process. I did not make it up a simple, very, very simple Google search, Mr. Speaker. And that is what happens. The thing is when it is said here, when it is said by the leader of the opposition. Member for Miku South. The member is mis misleading a house again, Mr. Speaker. We're speaking semantics, Mr. Speaker. When a country goes bankrupt, it goes to the IMF and has a restructuring program. And maybe I didn't say that in its detail, but that's exactly what took place in, um, in, in Grenada, which has taken place in Barbados, took place in St. Kitts. That is how countries declare bankruptcy. They go into a structural adjustment program, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if the member wanted to say he speaks on a point of elucidation, I would probably understand. But to say I am misleading the House is to say I am speaking an untruth. It is clear that a country cannot be put through the bankruptcy process. How you open your mouth in Parliament for the world to hear that a country is filing for bankruptcy or has filed for bankruptcy, it is simply not true. It is not true. And a Creole look at this, halfway. halfway. That's the first one. Then, Mr. Speaker, he said he was in conversation with the member for Viewfort South about Haiti. You know, about Haiti. I'm just wondering if it is that very Haiti, he stood on a political platform and said that Haitians are not proud to be from Haiti. I want to know if it's that same Haiti. And I also want to inform him, today we have a heroine in Julian Alfred, who was a coach? Who was a coach? A Haitian. A Haitian was a coach, Mr. Speaker. So sometimes when we speak, we speak as though we stand alone. This world is interdependent, Mr. Speaker, and what goes around comes around. And oh, it does, Mr. Speaker. Before I go to the CIP legislation, he speaks about interpretation of law. And I'm happy he can bring that in up here, Mr. Speaker, because it is this very leader of the opposition who at the time was prime minister for five years, never appointed a deputy speaker, interpreted the constitution in his own fashion and said that for the five years, it was not convenient for him to appoint a deputy speaker. Member for Miku South. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I'm very serious. I'm going to ask the member to withdraw that statement because it's, it is grossly inadequate. He knows what the interpretation. Mem member, member for Cassie Central, just a minute. He knows what the interpretation of the Constitution is. It is at the convenience of the House. It's not the responsibility of the member, the leader, or anybody else individually to appoint the Speaker of the House, the Deputy Speaker of the House. It is for the House, and it requires the majority of the House That's to be able to do so. So, Mr. Speaker. He needs to withdraw that because that's an absolutely inaccurate statement. Member Vakash. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I will repeat. The Constitution speaks to the appointment of a Deputy Speaker. And it says the House shall appoint as soon as it is convenient. 
he did not appoint for five years and said up to now it's not convenient. Again, Mr. Speaker, on a point of order, the member was going very well. That is for the House at their convenience. What, what's the point of order, Mr. Speaker? The point of order is, again, you're misleading the House. You're Remember. suggesting that it, is the, it was the leader who did not appoint it. It's for the House to appoint, Mr. Speaker, not for the leader. Remember, maybe the, on this point, the, the leader of the opposition is correct. You may, wish, you may wish to see his administration as opposed to him. The, his administration led by him. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let him deny that one. Member from Yuko South. Mr. Speaker, again, I'm so sorry to belabor the point, but it has nothing to do with my administration. My administration are members of the House, but the House is an entirety group. In fact, that the person who, anybody who was a cabinet member, as you know, cannot be the Deputy Speaker of the House. The only persons that were available who didn't, who qualified were the members of the opposition. And none of them wanted to be the, the Deputy Speaker of the House. And that's fine. Well, that, that's Miku, the responsibility of the House. Well, well, member from Miku well, South. Well, well. Mr. Speaker, cannot, I will just, not go down that path. Member of Castries, please. Member from Miku South, you cannot have it both ways. Yeah. Exactly. You cannot argue about interpretation. Mm -hmm. and want to take offense about his interpretation. That's correct. That, that's correct. Remember, he has interpreted it based on precedent. And convention. And convention. That on convention. May I just refer, the Constitution is merely the skeleton. It's his usage that puts flesh onto those bones. You see, Mr. Proceed Speaker. Proceed, member. Mr. Speaker, let me just say this. The Constitution envisaged you, the Constitution envisage a cadre of honorable men and Member women for in Central. this parliament. Member for Castry Central, yes. I rule that you in order. Just proceed, please. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So just to, just to belabor that point a little, Mr. Speaker, in terms of the Constitution is the bare bones, I am saying the Constitution envisaged a cadre of honorable men and women around this chamber around this table. One thing you cannot legislate on, Mr. Speaker, is integrity. You cannot legislate integrity and honor. You can legislate everything else, but when you enter the political arena, you are expected to do what has always been done and is known as the norm. That is it, Mr. Speaker. And I'll come to the four prime ministers that a member from Sozel referred to earlier. But another indication, Mr. Speaker, the Constitution is clear, and again, I'm going to interpretation, that there must be a sitting of Parliament within 30 days after a general election. Am I wrong? Oh, definitely not. When the leader of the opposition was Prime Minister, he was asked about whether he does not know the Constitution, the most supreme law of our country, spoke to the convening of Parliament within 30 days. You know what his answer was, Mr. Speaker? That the Constitution did not dictate sanctions for non-adherence. That is why I'm telling you, you can legislate, but you, you cannot legislate integrity. You cannot legislate compliance. When people enter this political arena, they are expected to behave in a certain way. And today, all of a sudden, you know about interpretation. And then, Mr. Speaker, in a surreptitious way, he throws jabs at the CIP legislation. And I have to laugh. Again, CIP legislation. When the CIP legislation was passed, when the member for Viewfort North South was Prime Minister, the terms and conditions were unequivocal. The number of passports were unequivocal. What did the member for Miku South do, Mr. Speaker? What did he do? What did he do? He changed the legislation. It was mandatory that the CIP money come into Parliament, you take it to Parliament, and you disclose what you are going to use it for. That legislation was amended, Mr. Speaker, by a Miku South-led government when he was Prime Minister. He amended it so that no longer 
No longer was it a legal requirement to come to parliament to say what you're doing if the people see IP money. But every day now is where the money gone, where the money gone, WTF, WTF. Is the member for Miku South? The member is completely listening, misleading the House. Where's the legislation? The money came into an economic fund that was, this, that was established by the former government. And that economic fund was there. Until the economic fund was formed, the money was coming into the consolidated account. It is their government Mr. Speaker, Mr. What is, what is, that amended, what's the, point amended, the, amended, amended the act ah. to allow that any expenditure from the economic fund can be made simply by the approval of cabinet. <laughs> so they're the ones who've made that fundamental change. All the regulations were there to, 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 to know where the money was going. But remember, what, was, what exactly are you objecting to that he said? Because the member is saying that we change the legislation to allow the money to go anywhere. The money I went, never, said, never that. said that. Economic I never said, said that, Mr. Economic Speaker. He never said that. He I said, never said that. Member from Miku South, you can't be judge, jury, and execution. That's, that's, what, point, he, that's what he always is. I rule. I, let me repeat. Member, member for Castries Central, calm down. There, there Sorry, is a presiding officer. So member for Miku South, your objection cannot be sustained because you have not dealt with what he said. Please proceed, member. Mr. Sister. Speaker, let me just reiterate. I said that the legislation was in place when the member for Viewfort, Viewfort South was prime minister and leader of the country. Quite rightly, Mr. Speaker, to maintain transparency and accountability, all CIP funds were to be deposited in an economic fund. When the member for Miku South was prime minister, and, 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 let me add, and the expenditure therefrom had to be debated in parliament. So the expenditure from the economic fund had to be approved by parliament. As prime minister, then, in his deed, I wish solutions will never put us through again. But when he was prime minister, the legislation was amended to remove parliamentary approval for expenditure. That's what I said. Mr. Speaker, again, on a point well, of... Remember, from Microsoft, you must wait for me to call you. My apologies. You can't just stand up and object. Please proceed, Member from Microsoft. I can't. Yes, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There has been no amendment to any piece of legislation, Shh. not a requiring it to get parliamentary approval, Mr. Speaker. As I indicated, because the economic fund did not exist, the monies came through the consolidated account. All the monies go into the economic fund. If the member really wants to be to provide clarity, how come in the three years since his administration member, there's member, been no income statements or audit statements member, of member the economic from fund? South, no. In fact, when I came into the government, the economic Miku fund South. only began, Mr. Speaker. Member of Castry Central, member of Castry Central, you may put on your mic and continue. I turn them. I turn all the mics off. Mr. Speaker, if any one of us were to check the legislation as existed then. It speaks to the money shall go to an economic fund which is hereby established. That's what the law said. The law said it shall go into an economic fund, which means the establishment was contemporaneous with the passage of the legislation. How can you say there was no economic fund? The law clearly said it. The economic fund is hereby established. You see, Mr. Speaker, numbers, numbers don't lie, neither do literature, existing literature. And all of these I can make available at a different forum, Mr. Speaker. I can. Now, as it, as it relates, Mr. Speaker, to the number, the establishment of an escrow account, Mr. Speaker. Hmm? The law made it clear that the escrow account had to have been established in St. Lucia. What did the DSH agreement contain? 
He signed it, the two of them signed it. They know what it contained. That there shall be an escrow account established anywhere to which we have no access and in which the passport money shall be deposited overseas. I lie. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. So don't talk about CIP legislation. You all were the ones that amended CIP legislation to suit yourselves. Huh? You all amended it to suit yourselves. Up to now, Mr. Speaker, I don't know and I will not speculate. I'm not here to speculate. I don't know if T.O.A. King sold passports pursuant to that agreement. I don't know. I don't know where that foreign account was established. I don't know. I don't know how much money was in there and how much was removed and how much was retained. I don't know. But the agreement provided for Member it. Member Central Home. Member of Miku South. Mr. Speaker, this has been well debated. What is the point of order, Member? The point of order is the Member is misleading the House, Mr. Speaker. And how is he doing that? He's misleading the House because he is saying that there was an escrow account and that we he's not referring to the fact that the Act was changed to allow an escrow account to, to be held overseas. And the fact is the minister from CIP has acknowledged that he found the account and he's found all the money member in for, the account. Member, so that is completely me, different member than what the member is insinuating. Yes. Member from Miku South, yes, ma the member said he does not know. What does the fact that the minister, any other minister, says the anything about it? Cabinet. Member, how, can he, how could he not know? Member, been, well, he, has member, his, he has his own show. He doesn't know. Member, let us know when you say that. Member, he said he never know you said that. He said he never know you said that. He said he never know you said that. Member for, member for Miku South. So this is becoming member a for Miku South. <laughs> I'm not going to debate with you. I'm allowing you all the latitude, but when I speak, you don't. Please proceed, member for Kansas. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm saying I am not speculating. But the DSH agreement signed by those two members opposite here today, Mr. Speaker, the member for Miku South and, and, and Suazel, they signed an agreement permitting one, the establishment of an escrow account in a foreign country. Two, that the proceeds of passport sales can be deposited therein. Three, that the government and its agents had no access to those monies. And four, only Tio King and his agents could have withdrawn from that account. Now, I am saying, Mr. Speaker, I don't know if passports were sold. I don't know if money was, went into that account. I don't know if there was money left, but I'm saying the two of them created the avenue to make it happen. That's what I'm saying, as a fact. And today, today they'll stand up and ask you, where the funds? Where the funds? <laughs> where the funds? You know? Now, Mr. Speaker, on, he spoke of subsidizing rice, flour, and sugar. Mr. Speaker, you know, every time the leader of the opposition opens his mouth, he takes a position that is politically conducive, but it is not the voice echoed by the majority of St. Lucians. When that 2.5% the health and security levy, Mr. Speaker, was established, he had a big brouhaha. Oh, health and security levy. There'll be thousands of people at our match. If he wanted to know what a walk for progress was, I know he was in hiding, but he saw the clips. He saw the clips of over 15,000 people applauding the government for what it's doing, Mr. Speaker. Okay? So don't come with your brouhaha. The people of St. Lucia, the people of St. Lucia, the people of St. Lucia, who? You alone are the people of St. Lucia. Because we are doing so well, you cannot deal with it. Mr. Speaker, it is not only the subsidization of rice, flour, and sugar that has found the economy of this country in the good state that it is. 
Mr. Speaker, since we lost our protection on the European market for our bananas 32 years ago, 1992, the economy of this country has not grown by 3% for any three consecutive years. Guess what? Under this administration, Mr. Speaker, we have gone that far and we are projecting we are projecting economic growth of between 7 and 7.5% 7 for this financial year and about 4% for the next financial year. It will be the first time, Mr. Speaker, that the country would have grown by more than 3% in each of the five years of any given administration, Mr. Speaker. That is what economic performance is. That is what leadership is, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I was very heartened. I was heartened when the governor of the ECCB came to cabinet and he actually gave us the numbers. He gave us the numbers. We didn't ask him to manufacture the numbers for us. And I asked him, Mr. Speaker, sadly he wasn't at the meeting on, on Thursday. Oh, when was it? Last week he wasn't there. You know, I don't know where he was. But Mr. Speaker, I was heartened. And I asked him, will you show the leader of the opposition those numbers? He said, yes, I must. He said, yes, I must. Because Mr. Speaker, in 2016, when the Labour Party left government, your debt to GDP was one of the lowest in the history of this country. When we came back in 2021, it was one of the highest in the history of this country. Poor management, very poor management. And the grass and the numbers are there. They are there, so we can go all the brew ha 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 ha, brew ha ha ha. The statistics are there. And I could tell you the governor of the ECCB intimated, Mr. Speaker, that the country is in good shape. Very, very good shape, Mr. Speaker. I don't have the graph with me. I didn't think it was necessary that I would be coming here and then I would hear about subsidy on rice, flour, and sugar. Unemployment, the lowest in history on record. And I see the most collections ever last year, ever. And that is directly related to the unemployment, Mr. Speaker. So when you hear them talk, Mr. Speaker, when you hear them talk, and then they talk about health care and this and that, I want you all to give this Prime Minister a round of applause for me because he has made the greatest allocation to the Ministry of Health ever in this country, Mr. Speaker. The biggest, as soon as the, Labor, uh, the UWP came in, in 2016, they cut the allocation to health. Tell me I liar. I have the books. Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. We can say all what we want, Mr. Speaker, but the records are there. The records are there. The records are there, Mr. Speaker. So sometimes, Mr. Speaker, you know, you listen to them and you ask, wait, wait, wait. If there was a disease called soundism, all of them get it, Mr. Speaker. All of them get it, Mr. Speaker. Now, over to the member for Swazel. You know who these days, Mr. Speaker. Honestly, I saw a gentleman in the honorable member for Swazel. I saw a man who I believe stood by the principle of honesty, but, but his disingenuity, Mr. Speaker, and, and his ability to be repetitious with untruths, Mr. Speaker really seem to bamboozle me, Mr. Speaker. Because, you know, I'll deal with him another time. I will deal with you another time, not now, but it really, really, I was taken aback and I'm still taken aback by you. You have an allocation, you overspend it. You overspend your allocation and then say you don't get all of it. But I'll deal with that another time, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Legislation is not supposed to, and I think the member for Viewfort South echoed the same. Light, my light on. Member for Swazel, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the member again is misleading the House. He indicated that I got an allocation for $100,000 that I overspent. Mr. Speaker, I will say it again. I have not received 
the full allocation that was granted to me from June last year. The records are there. How much have you received? Okay. From June last member, year. Please, well, just, was listen, listen, when a member is on his feet at the point of order, you should not interrupt member. Proceed. From June apologies. last year, a letter was written to me, providing me for $100,000 <laughs> for national housing assistance. Mr. Speaker, the member has taken significant umbrage to that, to the point where the member has hurled several in, in, insults at me, not just in the House, but outside of the House, Mr. Speaker. Okay? Mr. Speaker, the member... But what is, what is the point of order? The point of order, Mr. Speaker, is the member has just indicated that I have overspent on the $100,000 that was given to me. Yes. That's what he has just said. My I have record. not received... Did he say that or did he say the Mr. allocation? Sorry, Mr. Did he say the, the money you received or the allocation? He said I have overspent yeah, no. yes. on, the, on the allocation or the monies that received. Allocation. Mr. Speaker, I can tell you to date, I have not received $100,000. <laughs> remember, I mean, remember, but there is a difference between an allocation and the amount you have received. That's the point right. I'm trying to make. And I have not received. Yes, but he never said you received. He said you were given an allocation. Uh -huh. But you can overspend that allocation even before receiving the money, no? That's correct. I can overspend the allocation, Mr. Speaker? Even re before receiving but the money, Mr. no? Speaker, how can I overspend if he has not given it to me? You can, spend, you can spend from other sources hoping to get it back. No, Mr. Speaker. That's not, that's not the case. No, no, but the point is an allocation is different from monies received. Do you agree with that? No, I didn't agree with that, yes. An allocation? If you are allocated... <laughs> So, for example, <laughs> monies. No, are, I want to be very clear with the Seven thousand. Money, monies have been allocated to Parliament, uh -huh. which we had not received. Which is why the <laughs> Minister of Finance had to make some monies available to us because our allocation was not yet in hand. Right. So, monies received are different to the allocation ascribed to you. I have not received different or otherwise, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> okay. All right. And I want him to show otherwise. Mr. Speaker, I will not belabor the point. I will not belabor the point. But remember, he speaks only of 100,000, not saying that he has another allocation, a previous allocation of 60,000 that he overspent by about 2,000. He had a previous one of 60,000. That remember, one he remember he, he, be specific to what he said. Okay. He related to the 100,000. Yes. Stick to the 100,000. Yeah, but I'll, let me deliver that, Mr. Speaker. But I'm... You know, every time I look, Mr. Speaker, to my frontal left, I have to say, such a good soul. Such a good soul. Because for the member for Swazel to overtly admit, he admitted 100,000, but it is 160,000 and was overspent. Hold on. In addition, he admitted in Parliament that the member for, for Castries East and Prime Minister gives him $100,000 every quarter for CDP. Really? Mr. Speaker, we have been in office for three years. Let's just say three years. That's four, that's how many is three, four, that's 12. He has received at least 1.2 million on the CDP and 160,000 on the housing. You know, you know, Mr. Speaker, that is what the member for Castries East is doing for the opposition. And yet, when there was a little to be done in Castries East, they used the vehicle of the person who they believe would have unseated the current prime minister. And then she coined this famous doctrine, if you don't support us and you don't abide by our principles, then we cannot give you the goodies. You know, so I am happy to know that the member for Swazel has received over $1.3 million from this government. And the man sitting to his right must be ashamed of himself, Mr. Speaker, because the, the resources of this country don't belong to you. They belong to the people of this country. And this Prime Minister understands that. So even if they didn't subscribe to his political philosophies, he said, no, I shall treat you with respect and give you your share of the pie. That is how you, read, you lead, Mr. Speaker. In Denry North, in Denry North, Pamemo Saksima, 
you know. And today, today, y'all have the audacity. Y'all can stand there in a robust manner and speak to allocation as though it's a point of entitlement. You know, and that is why, Mr. Speaker, I just wish, I just wish persons like the leader of the opposition, you take him into a political confession box before the next election and ask him, if you will, will you give the opposition? He'll say yes. He'll say yes. He'll say yes to seize the levers of power. But within his conscience, Mr. Speaker, that would be a far-fetched utterance from reality. So, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I arresting vendors. Mr. Speaker, you, la, 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 let me, let me, you see, Mr. Speaker, don't touch my vendors. Mr. Speaker, let me say this. We all knew what existed outside, outside Parliament. We all knew the ghetto inflation that was, installation rather, that was happening right there. We all know what was happening. The place was in a mess. Today it's raining, Mr. Speaker. No vendor has to run with their, 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 their stuff for sale. Every vendor is sheltered. Every vendor can lock a house and go home while the things are secured. You want to talk about don't touch my vendors? I was in Prime Minister well, on two consecutive Mother's Day. Two consecutive Mother's Day, Mr. Speaker. They took all the artillery, all the vending facets of the vendors, and where they dumped it at Masha. And then the member for Castries, is, he called the fire service and said, look, I see people dumping a lot of garbage there. If they catch it on fire, the whole of Masha gone. And you have the audacity to talk about vendors? Huh? I wasn't the one who treated vendors like that. I treated vendors with respect and dignity and gave them a better enabling environment to operate from, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, as he said that, it bring me to the fishermen. It bring me to the fishermen who are now operating by, by the market, where we are building this, this um, really nice place, Mr. Speaker, for the tourists straight from the sheep and blah, blah, blah. Mr. Speaker, I am currently employed, I am currently engaged in the construction of a fish vending facility. It is now under construction as I speak at the, at the fisheries so that I can remove the fishermen there without ice, without running water and give them a proper sanitary place to vend fish from the, from the fish vending facility. That's how I operate. That's how I operate. That's how I operate. That's correct. I gave the vendors good places, proper places. Yes, I know you did, Mr. Speaker. I know you did. That's why, you know, they had this conference at Coco Palm. Coco Palm. And then they say, who's Coco Palm? I'm not there. But, you know, you're bringing me to it now. You're bringing me to it now. How many offices are we renting from companies in which the leader of the opposition has an interest? Remember, no, that's a bridge too far. Let's Sorry. Get back to the, let's get back to the... Yeah, um, I will. I will. Insolvency Act. I will. I will. Endless companies, Mr. Speaker, renting to himself, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker... Mr. Speaker, no, I no, I had to do that. I had to do that. Mr. Speaker, you know how can you be insolvent and the Insolvency Act applies to you when you as Prime Minister are renting offices from government to yourself? How, how can you become insolvent? That Insolvency Act cannot apply to you. Thirteen offices, thirteen. 13, and each of them, the leader of the opposition, has 25% interest in them. 25% interest, Mr. Speaker. So he got that insolvency, I can't apply to him, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, all in all, I want to say that I support, it was never my intention, I saw this as being so protective. This, this whole piece of legislation is meant to call people to the table to engage in dialogue. That's what it is. It has been on the table for 10 years, Mr. Speaker. As the member for Swizzle said, 
Four prime ministers went through it. Four. And that reminds me of St. Jude. There are four prime ministers, ex and, and the current prime minister on St. Jude. Three of them went in one direction as to continue St. Jude. There was one standalone. Guess which one? The cheese. <laughs> the cheese. And I was heartened when the member, the member from Beaufort South, South came in. Please. When the member for Viewfort South came in, he piggybacked on what the member for Viewfort from Castries North had started, and they continued because the people of this country were priority to both of them as prime ministers. And then they came another hurricane. Another hurricane that was clothed as a prime minister. And guess what the hurricane did? Demolished two buildings that cost us $7 million. And then came a, a fourth prime minister who understood what the two former prime ministers were doing and continued thereon. So you have four prime ministers. One went in one direction and three went in a different direction. So Mr. Speaker, it's clear. And as far as it relates to the economy, talking about subsidizing rice and flour and sugar into misinterpretation of, of this and that and the other, the CIP legislation, guilty as charged, Mr. Speaker. Guilty as charged. So I support, Mr. Speaker, this act encourages conversation. It will save homes. It will save businesses, Mr. Speaker. And most of all, it balances the interests of debtor and creditor. For too often, for too often, Mr. Speaker, I have witnessed properties worth millions of dollars, no upset price applied for, and those properties go for less than $100,000, Mr. Speaker. Less than, uh, the T.O.R. Kingland, T.O.R. Kingland at $3.71 a square foot. And our mall that was worth 60 million, you sell for 13 and a half. And our Cabot lands, you took our pensioners' money and lend it to them to buy it. Uh, high interest rate. The fellas paid a loan, but Mr. Speaker, high interest rate. The guys paid a loan in less than four months. They have paid the loan long and the millions come to them with a high interest rate. You know? <laughs> You know, so Mr. Speaker, you'll understand the frustration. You, you understand the frustration, Mr. Speaker. And I understand the frustration because this chair, called the Prime Ministerial Chair, has totally become foreign, shall remain foreign, Mr. Speaker, to this leader of the opposition who is now representing the people of Miku South. Bonjour, Miku South. One minute. Jamiku South, Nuka Passe Cholwa, Kika Potije Zot. Si ou a pay a le kayou, Bakla Passa Jos Vincezi, Bakla Popale by Bakla, Bakla Kai Pale Bau, Zokai try resolve Bagaila. Zokai say resolve li. Me pakite pes moun kwenon. Pa ki te moun vini ek lang dou anko. Pa ki te koule wayay ay la kodi jozi fez ofe an yin ki pa bon. Pa fe yin. Bikos pou se klane, la ten yon community senta la. Yo ba yon lot tout la han yin fe yon community senta ak yin vi pou evit. Ek sa diga pa fe. Mwen ka fe sa diga, ba yi se jan diga. Ok? Mr. Speaker, I support the legislation. Jean-Mikou Sauf, pas fait nous encore souple. N'a pas de bon Dieu pour les bagailles la vini. Et tu as vini pour les ordres I vous en. Mr. Speaker, I support the legislation. I thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.